look how cheap this lithium ion battery is. And then you have it for six months and it explodes and burns down your whole van or your boat or whatever it is, and you're wondering why. And I'm just about to tell you right now. What is cracker lacking, people? It is Lockie, and today we're gonna be talking batteries. Which battery is right for you? The deep cycle battery or the lithium ion battery? So let's get into it, let's go. So if you're new to the channel, we're gonna be doing a special van conversion series, which is a bit more focused on the specialized questions about your van conversion, especially around the electrical side, because I am an electrician. Today, we're gonna to be talking about batteries, in particular, the deep cycle and the lithium ion. So let's just get into it. So we're gonna start off the advantage and disadvantages of each, talk a little bit about the deep cycle to start with, and then we'll move on to the lithium ion. So make sure you stick around to the end to get all the information about the lithium ion battery, because it is a pretty interesting battery with heaps of technology and it's really evolving really fast. So a little bit about a deep cycle battery. So deep cycle batteries, uh, before the use of lithium ion batteries came along, they were used almost everywhere. Uh, electric vehicles, cherry pickers or EWPs or you know, reach movers, whatever you might call them in your country, uh, UPS systems and renewable energies, uh, as well as security electronic, like those little exit signs you see everywhere, they've all got deep cycle batteries in them. But as course as lithium ions come into the market, and they're becoming a lot cheaper now. A lot of people are switching to lithium ion batteries to use them as well, because they're just more reliable, lighter, and they're becoming increasingly cheaper as time goes on. So when you go look at a deep cycle battery, you're probably gonna pick it up and you're gonna be like, holy this is a heavy battery. So two of my batteries in the van probably weigh more than me. Well, probably around 80 kilos, maybe maybe a bit less. And the reason why is because the plates inside it are actually a lot thicker than a normal starting battery for your car. And it uses a lot denser battery acid, which in conjunction with the thicker plates just makes it weigh a lot, lot more than most other batteries, especially compared to lithium ion batteries. So some people say that they've got a short life, but it really depends on how you store it, how you charge it, uh, and all the other factors around using a battery. So it can last a long time as long as you use it correctly, more so as long as you charge it correctly. My deep cycle experience, I've had two deep cycle batteries uh, in my boat at a previous time for about five years and I had no problems at all and they're probably still in that boat right now but of course I've sold that boat so we don't have that anymore and I can't show you but in this van we do have 200 amp hour deep cycle batteries which are fantastic. There'll be a link in the description below for those if you're interested in buying them or having a look at them. So you get two types of deep cycle battery really which is a flooded battery and a valve regulated lead acid battery. So you don't really see the flooded lead acid battery in around anymore. They're pretty uncommon. You do see a lot of the valve regulator batteries. So an example of a valve regulator battery would be a gel battery, an AGM battery, EV traction dry battery. So the EV traction dry battery is actually probably the best out of those three, but most common would be your AGM battery. So the reason why the AGM battery is so good, it basically just has yearly checks. So once a year, you might have to do a quick check over on the battery, but they're really, really reliable. Probably won't have, ever have an issue with them if you treat them correctly. Uh, the charging time on AGM battery is actually very, very short. Not as short as a lithium ion, but it's still not quite that long. And it has good charge retention, which means that it keeps charge for a long period of time. Even in storage, if you put it away, they do still keep charge fairly well. But the EV traction dry cell battery is probably a bit more upper class than a AGM battery, but it's not as common. An EV traction dry cell battery really has a long run time. It keeps charge a lot more than the AGM battery. It's got long life, good retention if and going into storage. Uh, the charging time is probably shorter than the AGM battery, but again, it is more expensive. So as soon as you start looking at the EV traction cell battery, you sort of start asking yourself, well, why don't I just move up to the lithium ion, which is why they're not so common anymore. So many of the advantages compared to a lithium ion battery is that they're a lot cheaper. So a lithium ion battery is about two to three times more expensive than a deep cycle battery. But the biggest advantage of, I think, of a deep cycle battery is a reduced risk of failure. So lithium ion batteries are known in the past to have a lot of fire, whereas fire and explosion, whereas the deep cycle batteries are not that commonly known. So some disadvantages of a deep cycle battery. One is the weight. It is very, very heavy and it is very, very big. My deep cycle battery, as I'll show you very soon, is about a foot and a half long and it probably weighs at least 30 kilos just for one battery. And you've got another battery as well, so that's about 60 kilos. Probably a bit lighter than me, but it is still very, very heavily. And they're both 110 amp hours, I believe. Maybe 100, I can't remember. So a big, big disadvantage of the deep cycle battery is the usable amp hours available. So 40% of the amp hour of your deep cycle battery is going to be under 10.5 volts, which means most of your things aren't going to run under 10.5 volts and everything will probably cut out. 
So that's something you really got to keep in mind that 40% of your power, which is a lot, is going to be under that 10.5 volts. And sometimes a lot on the cheaper deep cycle batteries, it can be up to 60%, which is a huge amount. So 40% is probably the best you're gonna get, maybe 35 if you're really lucky. Uh, so I'll just touch a little bit on using your batteries and charging them as well and how you store them. So I've worked on a few mine sites and power stations where they've had massive battery banks. And the reason they use this is for like a UPS, so an uninterrupted power supply. So if the power goes out to these places, they still have a way to use systems to check everything's still going okay. So I had a little bit of a rough idea on how to install them correctly. So I thought it was relatively easy. I made a little frame for my batteries just out of wood, sat them in there, put some metal stripping around the top that was insulated and just screwed that down to hold them in place. I mean, they're 30 kilos each, so unless you have a crash, they're probably not gonna move. But if you don't like making your own sort of frames and stuff like that, you can actually buy a set from automotive stores or camping stores where the battery just sits inside, you screw it to the floor and it's got a strap already on it and you just strap it down. It's like a rope that sort of goes through and then you tighten it and that's it. You don't have tiny knots, it's just automatically tightens itself, which is a great option as well. So wherever you install your batteries, keep in mind that it should have good ventilation and not get too hot or too cold. Or too cold, it will make your batteries discharge a lot quicker as we found out when we lived in the Austrian Alps in our winter time, our batteries drained really, really fast. If you put them in a box, like it's really okay, we're gonna end up putting ours in a box, but we're just gonna keep a lot of ventilation going. So we're gonna have a little vent on one side and a vent on the other side to keep that airflow sort of moving around those batteries and keep it all sort of safe and cool. So you really should have a DC to DC charger as you're driving around using your alternator. If you need a good one, I'll link the one we use below and a few others that I think are really reliable. And as well, your solar chargers or your wind regulators, whatever they are, all the same. Don't buy the cheap ones because they're just gonna be cheap and nasty. Put a bit of money into them. You just spent how many dollars on batteries? You might as well spend a bit of money charging them with a reliable source as well. Same goes for your 110 volt or 240 volt battery chargers as well. As with those 110 volt and the solar chargers, I'll put in the description down below what we use and what we recommend. So if you need a more in-depth sort of feel about a deep cycle battery, so check them out. They're really smart. They know what they're talking about. They deal with batteries every day. Right, now we'll move on to lithium ion batteries. They've really progressed in the last few years, but they are not new batteries. They've actually been around since 1991, and they're really just, with the whole renewable technology, these batteries have just <laughs> taken off. They've really just blown up. Everyone wants to get a lithium ion battery because they are just so much better than the deep cycle battery. So let's go through the advantages and disadvantages as to why lithium ion batteries have a much higher energy density ratio, which means that they are gonna keep a lot more energy. In a nutshell, that's basically what it means. So one cell of a lithium ion battery actually operates at a much higher voltage. So one cell is about 3.7 volts, I think. Yep, 3.7 volts compared to 1.2 of a deep cycle battery. So energy retention of a lithium ion battery actually lasts a lot longer in storage. So a, a deep cycle battery, around about one to 5% of that battery will be lost every day in storage. In lithium ion batteries, we're talking months before they lose energy, which is absolutely mind blowing. So if you park your RV up or your camper van, whatever you want to call it, and you park it up for the winter, you can probably come back to that in the summertime and it's still going to be charged. But it is a good idea to keep a charger on it. If you don't have a charger, they're probably still going to be okay. So I was saying with the deep cycle batteries, you lose about 40% of the usable amp hours when it gets below about 10.5. So with a lithium ion battery, it actually operates a bit different. So it's not till about 90% of the energy stored in that battery that that voltage will really start to dip down to below maybe 12.3, 11.9 in a lot of reports I've been reading. It really depends on what sort of battery you have. If it's a really good one, I dare say it'll stay up around 12.3, maybe even 12.5 before it starts to really dip down. So we'll talk a little bit about the disadvantages as well. You're all gonna know what I'm gonna start with. It's the, it's the cost. They're about three to four times more expensive than a deep cycle battery, which in my case was a lot. And I didn't really have the money to spend three or four times more than a deep cycle battery. So that's why I got the deep cycle battery. Working for me, great. But if I had the money, I would definitely jump on and get a lithium ion battery. For a lot of people, they will be coming down in price eventually over time, like all technology does. Eventually it'll drop down due to more people using it, more people buying them, supply and demand, blah, 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 blah. But they'll never be as cheap as deep cycle batteries, in my opinion. And the reason for this is for the complex circuitry uh, that protects the lithium ion battery. It is quite an expensive little circuitry compared to the deep cycle battery. That's sort of the only reason I think that it will never dip down to the price 
of a, a deep cycle battery, but I do think it will keep going down as it is. So one of the biggest disadvantages was that they were known to cause fire and explosions and we'll just talk about that in just a second. First we'll just talk about the difference between the cheap and expensive lithium ion batteries. So I got in contact with the uh, company called Amptron which is from Perth and they gave me a rundown of their lithium ion battery which is a relatively expensive but very reliable battery. And I'll leave a link in the description to them. So the more expensive ones use what is called a porosmatic cell which means that one cell is 3.2 volts at 100 amp hour. So you have a lot of them to add up to 12, 13 volts, and that's how you equal your 100 amp hour for this, this particular battery. So each individual cell, which is 3.2 volts at 100 amp hours, will have an explosion proof barrier around it, which means that it's mechanically protected from the other parts of the battery. So if you get a short or something inside that cell and it causes a fire, everything will stay inside that cell. Nothing will go to the other cells. So potentially, if you had a fault, you could change out that one and put a new one in instead of changing out the whole battery. But it would be on a means basis. So with the expensive ones or the cheap ones, the circuitry only controls what comes out of the battery and into the battery at the terminals. Most of them don't protect each individual cell of the battery. So that's why the porosmatic pros cell is so good that it sort of separates itself and eliminates more faults that could happen in the future. But the cheap ones are a bit different. They're just tiny little cells and they'll just be spot welded on each individual one. And you can see if you check out this video up here as to why they're so dangerous. They can explode and cause fires and it's happened many, many times before. And I really recommend you don't get a cheap one because the likelihood of it happening is a lot, lot higher. And the circuitry that protects everything is a lot more acceptable to faults than say a more expensive, reliable source. So just keep that in mind if you are thinking about buying a lithium ion battery. So the charging as well is a lot faster than the deep cycle battery. So I did read uh, someone else's blog and they said that within 25 minutes of them driving, their battery was fully charged. Not really sure how reliable the source is, but that is unbelievable. 25 minutes and it's fully charged. That is just whew, crazy. Installation of a lithium ion battery is basically the same. You just can't put it near any heat source or you're in your engine bay or anything like that. It actually heats up the lithium inside it and breaks down the uh, cells inside over time. And your lithium battery that's meant to last for 10 years might now only last one year. So keep that in mind. And uh, a lot of people had problems with that. But check out that video up there. They'll explain a bit more about it, what's going on and how they had problems because they put their, their batteries in the engine bay. So I hope you understand a little bit more about deep cycle batteries and lithium ion batteries. And I just touched on a little bit, just to give you more of an in-depth feel. We are going to be doing a lot more van build videos so if you want to see something in particular please drop a comment below on what you want to see or go on our instagram and drop us a message tell us what you want to see and why and we'll get back to you with the video but other than that if you enjoyed it leave a thumbs up and a comment subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on anything see you next time